we build insurance colonies in other parts of the world in case those animals become endangered. Who, God forbid, knows whatever happens to that little archipelago where they are. Freaking meteor could hit there. You, you just don't know. It's conservation through commercialization. There has to be a exactly. give and take. It's a touchy subject for some people, but not for me. Hey, there's a young, good looking guy behind you. 565 pounds, 104 years old. They've targeted animals that have been in Florida for many, many years established. We have to band together and we have to show that we are responsible. We can't let them think that we're just strange people that like strange animals. Oh, that's a disgruntled Galapagos tortoise, everybody. So that must mean I can only be at one place if you've seen a large male galop like that. We're at San Pascucci's and uh, it's the Florida Guana and Tortoise Breeders. We're hanging out with him and Sam, I like to surprise you. Yes. Okay, so he has no idea why I'm doing this video, but um, a few, like last month, I posted a picture of me hanging out with my galops and my Aldabra. Right. And all of the sudden, I had this crazy, um, you know, social media, sometimes it just takes on a life of its own. This was a person from Ecuador. Right. And there was recently a uh, some theft from the islands right. of uh, some baby galops. Yeah, sure. And so, you know, I didn't pay it any attention, but then all of a sudden more people from Ecuador started finding this post and it became like, you're not supposed to have those animals. You're an animal trafficker. Now, they got babies stolen. I have adult females. Right. Uh, right. Clearly, I did not raise them up from babies. Um, so I wanted to talk about the legalities right. of owning uh, Galapagos tortoises. I finally did straighten everything out and they understood, but two things. One, how can you own a Galapagos tortoise? And two, why is it okay that in this country we're allowed to own them? Because they were saying that we're supporting the black market and that's just not the case. The opposite. Right. The opposite. Well, <laughs> boy, I tell you what, I just laid one on you. And did we you, can, listen, we can walk and talk. I want to show everyone your awesome animals, but you, you uh, did, you did lay one on me there, but you know, you have to realize that the animals are here that are breeding here have been here, you know, for, for a long time. I've been here for hundreds and hundreds of years here in America. So just the same way there are Galapagos tortoises throughout Europe and everywhere else. So there's no smuggling going on here. These are animals that are, that are raised here or, um, Galapagos are no longer, you cannot internationally trade uh, Galapagos tortoises. But, you know, it's not but maybe 60 years ago, you could import Galapagos wow. tortoises. Wow. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, Adolf was one of the last legally imported Galapagos tortoises from Ecuador. Can we go see him? Yeah, so we could go see it. And also the story HMS. HMS was also legally imported from the Galapagos. So those animals were established for good reasons. Those animals were exported because what we're trying to do is ensure the species of the Galapagos tortoise. That was the reason that they were exported. So we, we build insurance colonies in other parts of the world in case those animals become endangered. Who, God forbid, knows whatever happens to that little archipelago where they are, freaking meteor could hit there. You, you just don't know. Well, that's, so, that's a good point. Like, um, I learned this when I visited my friends here. You go yeah, first. Okay. I, I learned this when I visited my friends at the San Diego Zoo. They have a colony of Fijian iguanas. Yeah. And they're the largest colony yeah, sure. outside of yeah. Fiji because anytime you have an animal that lives on an island, it's already an endangered animal because yeah. it's only found in a very small area, area. of the world. Right. So like he said, a meteor, a hurricane, a typhoon, right. earthquake, volcanic eruption right. could be devastating. The end of that species. Exactly. So right. what we've done is created a living ark in certain pockets right. of the Insurance world. Insurance colonies. Yeah. That's what they are. So those animals that you see here are legally here. You know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, control, you know, uh, legal control for the importation and exportation of people trying to move Galapagos tortoises in and out of countries. We here we can't even move them across state lines you right. know, without going through a lot of paperwork, and that may change soon. I, I would expect soon. You know, it's probably going to be very hard to get a license to take a glop from one state to, to the another. To another. Yeah, because they're always crushing down, they're always taking away the rights and everything, and our liberties, and that's one of the things that they intend to do. So, uh, and we're not for it, you know, we're not for it with aldabras or glops or anything else. We don't want to see those animals come out of the wild. 
So we breed them here, and there's some, and there's some people doing some good breeding here of Aldabra tortoises, and that's important because that supports them in their natural habitats. In fact, uh, we're, we're involved in a program where what we do when we buy them from the islands, we actually in, well, actually will place in the wild a certain amount of the animals to repopulate. So we're involved in a program where we actually re or repopulating part of the. Uh, of the of the uh, Mauritius or the Seychelles, wow. where the Aldabra tortoises come from. And so that's really cool. And this is a way uh, to borrow a term um, that Tom Crutchfield, you guys have seen him before on our channel. It's conservation through commercialization. There has right. to be exactly. a give and take. Right. Um, you know, uh, and and it's a touchy subject for some people, but not for me. It makes sense if there's a value for the animal, and that value of the animal can then go back and help. Uh, its native population. I think that's an important way to look at conservation because we've reached a tipping point. Uh, there's just too many people. And so many times we talk about, we just need to be hands off. I think the time for people to be hands off about this type of conservation has long passed because our population as a species has just skyrocketed yeah. in the last 20 yeah, years. We're the invasive species. We are. A lot of people want to control invasive species. You know, let's let's face it. There's a nice uh, ivory there. Look at that beautiful ivory sulcata. Well, here's here's. Let's just talk about sulcatas. Okay. Sulcatas in their native range are kind of hard to find nowadays. Yeah, sure. Because of course the people in that range are hungry and starving yeah, and economically their, depressed. Their homes, their street. Exactly. Right. So here's a species that was brought in, I think, in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. And now it's one of the most popular pet Probably, animals and there's no reason to take from the wild yeah nobody wants them from the wild right there right, you go absolutely so there is no more wild commercialization of, of spurs and yet it's one of the most popular pets tortoises that we have it's probably the most popular tortoise pet we have in the United States they have to be one of and my favorite and, and they're great animals they have they have great personalities you just have to know what you're getting into you know you have to have the proper climate you have to have the proper size yard there's a bit more commitment when you're dealing with a sulcata tortoise than you're dealing with some other tortoises because they're big time diggers and so you've got to ensure that they, they can't escape that. so you know i just want to make a note before you buy you know do the research and figure out if that's a good animal for you to have in that area absolutely that's responsible and that's what you, hey listen we're friends for that reason you guys know what i'm always preaching that's why sam and i uh really connected when we met uh maybe six seven years ago oh, now no, it's longer. is it longer it now? has to be longer oh my gosh we feel well it's been for, I, for I, him I, it's too long yeah for me it feels like 20 years you know, i hear you, it. you you're still a good you know young oh, good looking yeah, guy he's so. very kind very kind hey there's a young good looking guy behind you who's that yeah, well that's adolf that is adolf let's, All right, let's, let's go see in if there. we can uh, sneak around him here now adolf was sick not long ago right was that adolf yeah, or was it, it was hms a year ago. come this way okay quickly, i'll come this so way this way don't get trampled all right you got to be you got to be faster than the 400 pound 500 pound tortoise because well, he's 565 565 pounds That's okay right. so you said this guy was originally from the galapagos yeah he was imported from the galapagos okay so and how many years ago was that do you reckon uh geez i think it was somewhere in the 60s i think it was. there you go guys so we're talking about uh in the 60s did he come in as an adult yeah, he would have come in as an adult because he would have been 40 years old then. Oh, oh my God. So he was an adult at 40 years old in the 60s. How old is he now? Uh, 104 is what we... Shut up. I, I don't mean that literally. I want you to keep talking, buddy. 104 years old, Adolf. And he was sick not long ago, but he yeah. made a full recovery. 100%. He was sick for four months. He could not move that leg. We went through a lot of... You know, he's, these animals are difficult to x-ray, they're difficult to treat, as you know and everything. So uh, we, we had to figure out what was wrong with them. Uh, you can find a lot of those videos. They're up on my YouTube channel. Florida. And where can Florida. they go? Florida Iguana Tortoise Breed is on my YouTube channel. Go check that out, guys. Make sure out, you go check out. I, I have to, listen, I bring you all the people that have mentored me. And uh, right here, uh, Sam has been a... I don't know how else to say, but he's been a lifesaver for my animals because whenever I have a problem with a tortoise or a lizard, uh, he's done so much work uh, that he's just brought me up to pace when it comes to caring for these animals. Yeah. How many years you've been in it? 35. 35 years. So, And you know something now, you know, I spend about two hours a day answering emails, helping people out, just ask, answering questions about health, about husbandry, about enclosures and stuff. I spent about two hours a day today so wow and it's uh it's uh 
it's a labor of love yeah, and it, it's it really I enjoy really I enjoy helping people and especially I enjoy saving and helping these animals you know I wish there was a little bit more freedom of information you know right now that even seems to be constricted you know some people are not they're not explaining hey buddy what's up huh you want something what are we doing here what are we doing here in your pen without anything to eat <laughs> See, he knows. That's so funny. No, I, I think I know what you're trying to say as far as exchanging information. Some people, and I've said this on the channel a lot, some people covet and hoard their information because they think it's... Yeah, they don't want a, the next guy to get a leg up on Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. And, and I've never been like that. Yeah, and okay. I've always... You've been always very transparent. Well, I try to be. And I think that it's the it benefits the animals. That's what it's all about. We're, we're benefiting yeah. these animals. Um, we're trying to you know, expand everyone's knowledge base because at the end of the day, what happens? The animals will benefit under our care. So I always say, be free with your information. That's what the, the comments are below. We have a really great uh, group of people that watch these videos. Yes. Uh, we, we have a minimal amount of the typical nonsense you'd find in the comment section. Uh, everyone generally helps each other on this yeah. channel. And I really think we have a great community. So I wanna shout you guys out because I really do appreciate that. Um, and I am not above criti being criticized as long as it's done I know, you've constructively. Been the most transparent. I've actually learned that from you because there are things that I seen you do a long time ago. You really broke the mold. Other people do it, didn't do it. You were very transparent. When things got sick, you talked about it. When things died, you talked about it. When things got away, when cages went wrong, you talked about it. I really think you were the leader in being that and in, in bringing that honesty because you know, I, I seen you doing it, and I said, you know, you have to be, you have to be more honest with people about, you know, what's involved in taking yeah. care of the animals, and what are things that can happen, and what are the prices that you pay when you do things that are wrong. So, yeah, you know, I compliment you on, you on that. I, I really appreciate do. that. I just, you take your licks, man. You yeah. take your licks because yeah. every yeah. knock is a uh, learning experience. Yeah, it's a step forward. Yeah. Can't you know, be like afraid I of used that. To say in the old neighborhood, you know, <laughs> every stop sign is a tombstone. There you go. <laughs> I like that, man. That's pretty good. He's from New York. The old neighborhood is a similar one that I'm from. That's why we have another connection as well. All right, so we were talking about the the ability to breed these animals in captivity. That ability in Florida is becoming more and more difficult to do. You're a member of the ZAA. You're right. an accredited breeding, breeding facility. facility um, yeah, yeah. So he's got some strength behind him in the form of an organization that's global, that pulls together the very best. I'd like to talk more about that uh, off camera because I would like to become a member uh, because I feel that with the laws that are coming down the pipe here in Florida, it's gonna be very important uh, that we Band we have together. to we have to band together and we have to show that we are responsible and that we are in this for the animals best interest um as you guys know i'm very passionate about education which is why i hang out with people like sam who i learn from and who are also passionate about it but if we don't act now um as a community we will lose the right and privilege to keep and care for these animals. And I have to tell you, I've done work with many zoos as you have, yeah. and they rely on private keepers to help them manage populations of endangered animals. Probably none more endangered than the Galapagos tortoise. This is a very, uh, it's considered an endangered animal, of course, because we talked about it earlier. They're an insular species. But um, what's going on in Florida right now is there are some laws being changed and um, they're trying to minimize the impact of invasive species. Yeah. Um, and I can see both sides of the argument. Um, these animals do not belong out in the environment. The problem is, is they've targeted animals that have been in Florida for many, many years established. And yeah. the reason that they were established is they didn't work with private keepers in in the beginning, in the beginning. Right. Um, we had a program in place the conditional species program which was working the animals had to be managed they had to be microchipped and now they're taking it and they're putting it into the prohibited character uh, category uh, which is why buttercup is not at my house right now I'm waiting on a permit uh, hopefully uh, I do meet all the criteria for that but on the 25th um, of this month there is a fish and wildlife meeting that you guys got to get on the call. Get on uh, the call. Get on the call and, and show your support. Let, let them know how you feel. Right. You can even be from Europe. You can be from um, uh, anywhere in the United States and you can help us here in Florida to continue to provide you with educational videos and the ability to work with species like this. So what you got to do is go to US Ark Florida 
and that is US Arc Florida, U-S-A-R-K-F-L on Facebook. All the information is there. Get on this ASAP. I wanna see you guys on this call on Friday. It's very important that we have numbers of passionate reptile people yes. explaining, yes. hey, look, these animals provide comfort for me. These, I can't have a dog or cat. Right. Uh, these are animals right. you know, that I care about. Because in my opinion, it's not about unfortunately the iguanas and tegus and pythons it's about the future uh what we are allowed to keep now they're coming for eventually yeah. you know you give an inch they take a mile oh, yeah, that's the way it is i want to just address two things Please that do. You, you, you had mentioned was you know it, it, if you go and you read the law and everything they're they're banning all of the you know uh, uh, you know all of the uh, uh, iguanas out of the wild they want to ban the commercialization you know because uh somehow they think that the commercialization the breeders of these iguanas are somehow aiding in 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 the uh, in the distribution of iguanas there's there there's no facts that pertain to that at all the last thing that any breeder wants to do is to have his stock get away so I, there are no examples that i know of where where commercial breeders of iguanas have aided to uh the, the iguana invasion going on in florida gotcha. I, I, don't, I don't see any of that you know I just want to back up to one other thing we're talking sure. about, the ZAA. Okay. You know, in addition to banding together, all of that's good, but the ZAA is also a focal point. It's an arrowhead that, that getting involved in the ZAA, there's a lot of regulations that we have to abide by. And these are regulations and these are controls that are self put on by the ZAA. You know, if you check and you look around, you'll see all of my cages are numbered. All of my cages have the species that are, that are supposed to be on them. We're required to keep certain records, where the animals came from, who the, who the animals go to. We're required, they have a, a complete uh, a set of laws, uh, regulations to, to be accredited, which include fencing, what are the fencing requirements, and all of those things are in place so that the animals uh, have, have better caging, they have the proper space, they have the proper water, they have the proper environmental needs for their species. That's part of what the ZAA makes you conform to by being a member so you know that's that's i think is a big that's an important part because you know you can come up and and you know you can think you're doing things right for for 25 years just the way i did but then getting involved in the ZA helped guide me to some of the regulations and policies that really need to be put in place so that you know the animals have have the have the the, the best health uh and and that uh it, you know, you're, you're doing your part in, in properly caging and housing those animals and everything. So I think that's, that, that's important for the ZAA if you want to grow up in yeah. this business a little bit. Well, be, be part more of, of the solution and get involved and, and, and uh, uh, allow yourself to, you know, to be uh, to guided by these To be people. guided by mentors what? like you. you exactly. and, and that's something else. So many people ask me, how do I get involved? How can I become? One of the best ways is to start with the zoological association yes. of america i'll have a link in the description below uh so you guys can do all the research um and not only is the zaa going to do what sam has said it's also going to open doors for you because these are zoo professionals uh they're also mentors so many of you want to know how do i get a job in in this world um well this is the way you start so uh check out everything we were talking about we'll have links in the description for us arc florida and we're also going to have the zaa down there as well i'm very serious about becoming a member myself um i just think it's important sam thanks for your time as always we learned a great deal about these animals and what it takes for us to keep these animals remember guys we're only as good as uh as each other <laughs> as as a unit a cohesive group um, it's up to us. Yeah. It's up to us to get involved. Exactly, man. And you know, and, and build the way things that should be. We can't let them think that we're just strange people that like strange animals, okay? These animals are just as important as dogs and cats and provide the same amount of comfort, education, love, and appreciation for the natural world, uh, more so in my opinion. So don't let anyone tell you what you believe uh, or love is wrong, all right? Get involved. Let your voice be heard and do it in a respectful manner. As always, thank you so much. Again, Sam, thank Take you. Care, We're out of here. Uh, like and subscribe, comment below. Let me know what you guys think and follow the link. I'll see you on the 25th. Get on that call. See you guys.